welcome to About Face Theatre presents Five Questions With and today's guest Kathleen Chalfant. Kathleen is an actor with an outstanding career, playing major roles consistently on and off Broadway for nearly 50 years. Uh, her many accolades include her Obie Awards for Wit and Talking Heads, her Tony nomination for Angels in America, her Callaway Award for Henry V, and her Lucille Lortel Award for Sustained Excellence, as well as another Obie in 2018 for Lifetime Achievement. In addition, her screen work includes recurring roles on TV shows such as House of Cards, The Guardian and The Affair, as well as in films like Kinsey and Isn't It Delicious. Kathleen, you're very welcome. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here. It's very nice to be even, um, even remotely in um, Dublin because I, I, have a, I have a very mysterious Irish grandfather mm. and a couple of years ago my husband and I were in Dublin and I like everyone else went to the library to look for him and the man that was helping me after looking for a while said well you know maybe he didn't want to be found. <laughs> 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 oh, a, a proper mystery man. Yeah. Like yeah. That's great. Yeah, well, we're very happy to have you here. And you're all you're always welcome. Well <laughs> always in, in, welcome. in real life in Dublin, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Very soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll just start off with asking you what you know play or experience first got you into theater. That's a very hard question because I seem to have been acting one way or another for as long as I can remember. Mm. Um, I have to say that I grew up in California and so I really, my first uh, desire in the acting department was to be in the cowboy movies <laughs> so that I could ride a horse and, yeah, yeah. and maybe, uh, maybe somebody would kiss me. I have to say that my role models uh, when I was five or six or seven were gender fluid <clears throat> because the guys had, you know, got to ride the horses. Um, and then um, after that, I was always in the play in school. Um, I remember uh, going to see um, a ver version of uh, South Pacific when I was uh, a young teenager in Oakland, California, where I lived, and being um, amazed at how progressive it was. Mm. You know, the way you condescend to people who are, <laughs> who are older. <laughs> yeah. So that's, I, and I meant to study the theater in college after high school, but I didn't. I, I studied classical Greek instead. Hmm. But, Amazing. I, but, but this is all I ever wanted to do. Okay, great. Yeah. And, was, and was that classical Greek any use to you in your acting career then, Kathleen? Uh, it allows me to pronounce uh, Greek names mm. uh, when I'm in Greek plays. And it puts me in the embarrassing position of people asking me questions always about the Greek plays, which I can seldom answer. <laughs> That's right. You can just answer in Greek, Kathleen. I'll never, <laughs> I'll never know the difference. And that and that. <laughs> well, that's that's great, Kathleen. So, okay, so set specific and cowboy movies are a big influence. <laughs> but um, but what's what's a great play that you love and why? A great one of the the great play that I've seen most oddly in my life is Uncle Vanya, mm. and I think I must have seen. Uncle Vanya, six times, hmm. all possible versions of it from, from the, there was a big starry version of it at the Circle in the Square when we first moved to New York hmm. uh, with George C. Scott and uh, Julie Christie and Elizabeth Wilson and uh, uh, Nicole Williamson, and it was a famously troubled um, <clears throat> production and people used to leave in the middle of it. I mean, the mm. actor in the middle of it all the time. But the the matinee performance that I saw was the first, I guess, really transcendent um, 
theatrical, perfectly uh, satisfying theatrical experience I'd ever seen. Mm. Um, and then I've seen it in all possible uh, uh, incarnations, including the wonderful um, Andre Gregory version called uh, Vanya on 42nd mm -hmm. Street. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, and I've never, I've never <laughs> been in it, have I? But what's great and about that place, you can still be, you, you know what I mean? You can still be in it. There's still plenty of role, you know what I mean? There's yes, still- I know it's one of the, actually one of the last uh, roles in Chekhov that I can still do having done none of them um, mm -hmm. because all the, all the, the, all the other women, however old they seem to be at the time, we must remember that Chekhov died in his fifties. So, <laughs> yeah. you know. 76 was unimaginably old. He didn't write any characters like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. So can you tell us about a time then in your, in your theatrical life where something turned out differently than you expected it to? Yes, I had a catastrophic thing happen to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Twice in my life, um, I've had the experience of Tony Kushner saying to me, I've written a part with you in mind. And the first time uh, became uh, six years of involvement with Angels in America from 1988 to 1994. And that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the second was a play uh, that Tony wrote called The Intelligent homosexual it's, it's it's the it has a very long title and it's known uh, as oh mm -hmm. and tony came and said that he had written parts for me and for linda emond and for uh steven spinella in this new mm -hmm. play that he was working on and then a couple years later he said well so we're working on the play and we're going to do it at the guthrie in minneapolis and i was all excited and it was a great mm -hmm. wonderful part i thought and we did the play. I noticed, I, I, the, it went all right as far as the audience was concerned, mm -hmm. but the, it was a very difficult uh, experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I began to feel that perhaps I wouldn't be going maybe to New York with the play, but nobody said anything. And so mm. we ended the play in, uh, I think, May-ish. And my husband and I went off um, for our summer vacation. And we were, it sounds very glamorous, in the mountains in mm. Italy mm. when I got a call from Tony, yeah. um, whom I by then had known for 20 years saying, um, Kathy, um, I just can't do the play with you in it. Wow. <laughs> and I think I'm over that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was awful. Yeah. It was awful. Yeah. I didn't, I mean, even though, you know, I now say, well, I felt something, but I really yeah. didn't didn't see that coming and in fact they there was they went on and did the play without me mm. and i have had the experience since then of having all sorts of people who don't know this story say how come you didn't play that part seems like that's a part for you yeah wow there we go you never can tell yeah and and did he did he, did he ever tell you why um, at some, we never, uh, I, I can only say we never really understood each other. Huh. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have all sorts of ideas that didn't have anything to do with Tony, actually had some to do with somebody else and their influence, but <clears throat> them for, you know, yeah. paranoid fantasies, perhaps. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We, we did oh, story decrease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, yeah. I, we never did. Uh, I mean, and, and we now are, our, our, our relationship is in some serious way 
irreparably broken. Mm -hmm. So we right. continue to be fond of each other. And yeah. whenever we see each other, fine. Actually, the last time we saw each other was at Ron Liebman's uh, memorial service, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. was uh, an extraordinary event. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, okay, Kathleen. So you've had an amazing career in the theatre mm -hmm. so far. Uh, but you also um, are, you know, have been working quite a bit in, in TV and film in, in, in recent years. So what is it about the theatre that keeps you coming back to it? What moves you? What, what excites you about theatre? Oh, I think that everybody's there at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge because, you know, Whatever anybody says, I mean, I suppose if you're hanging from a waterfall or something, it's hard, but it's not ha very hard, mm. the movies and the television in the end, mm. because almost anybody can do almost anything for a minute and a half. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or maybe even as, as many as five minutes. <laughs> it's not so hard. And then if you don't get it right, the first you get to do it over again, usually. Mm. Yeah. That is, I have to say, not true of my... Um, cameo in Kinsey, but we won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, and the thing about the theater that is so satisfying and seems impossible when you begin is that you get to go all the way through from the beginning to the end and that you are making the thing that you're making together with the audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it's happening just right in the moment. And it's exciting both, both ends, both mm -hmm. be, in the, be on the stage and feel the people who have come and to be in the audience and to be part of the, the, of the uh, work that's on the stage. And, and it never, it never, stops being exciting. It sometimes seems impossible. I write a play that I need to learn and I'm out of the habit of, yeah, as yeah. we all are, yeah. out of the habit of learning the words. <laughs> Absolutely. So in, you know, in your experience then of, you know, of theater and the, the skills that you need for theater and things like that, is there any any particular theatrical skill that you found or anything that you've learned through theater that you found really useful in the rest of your life and day to day? I think the most useful skill is collaboration, which involves listening. Because paradoxically, of course, most, not everyone, but many, 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 many people in the theater are basically solitary people hmm. and uh, actors. And hmm. we uh, come together in these communities that we make, these kind of ad hoc communities, and those are lessons in living in mm -hmm. compromise, in listening, in, in delayed gratification, which is a huge, uh, uh, a huge lesson that mm -hmm. doesn't always translate perfectly <laughs> <laughs> into real life. But, but making a play is such a good place to practice that. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's true of any live communal performance. Mm -hmm. um, people who play in orchestras and um, bands, people who sing together, all of that. I, I've done quite a number of um, one person <clears throat> shows and I miss, I miss the, the collaboration in the making of it, though you have other collaborators, of course, usually mm -hmm. the writer and the director and all like that. But mm -hmm. um, it is that, it is the making of community, I think, that is the thing that translates most. Mm -hmm. That's great. It's beautiful. I love that. Um, that's, well, this, is, this has been so great, mm -hmm. Kathleen. Thanks so much 
So just as a bonus question, can you tell us anything about what you're working on at the moment? Well, I am speaking to you from the 19th floor of um, an executive suite building in downtown Toronto, mm -hmm. where I am on, I think, day six of a 14 day quarantine lockdown uh, in preparation for making a pilot uh, mm -hmm here for the CW network called Our Ladies, <clears throat> in which I play the oldest nun there has ever been, um, <laughs> who is deaf and uh, brandy swigging and <laughs> uh, at speed in a motorized wheelchair. <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> is known as Sister Joyce. Oh. So that sounds brilliant. Uh, that's what I'm working on now. And that'll be, I'll be here until the 18th of April. That'll, the, we do, there's two weeks of quarantine and two weeks of shooting. Yeah. And then I'm doing uh, uh, on labor, over Labor Day weekend, a kind of experiment in real theater. Mm. Uh, my friend, uh, Karen Melpede has written a play called Blue Valiant, which is mm. about um, a woman and her love for a horse. The horse is played by a piano score. Uh, the person who's looking after the horse is George Bartenyev, who is also Karen's uh, husband. And there is a young uh, Central American woman in the play. And we're going to do it, God willing, um, outside mm. uh, uh, Friday and Saturday of or no, is that's not right. Saturday and Sunday of Labor Day weekend on a farm in Pennsylvania, just near the near, near the New York line. So, oh, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> oh, and then yes, and then I'm doing. Um, my friend Winter Miller hmm. wrote a play called No One Is Forgotten, a two-character play about a journalist <clears throat> and a, a um, an aid worker who have been imprisoned, so you can't tell where they are. So the whole play takes place in their cell. And a wonderful opera singer named Eve Gigliotti, who went to school with Winter, saw the play and decided that it should be an opera. And so it's being turned into an opera. Um, there are two, uh, each of the parts is played by a singer and an actor. And we wow. did a workshop of the first third of the play um, um, about a month and a half ago. And now we're going to work on it again at the beginning of June. Oh, fantastic. That sounds beautiful. It is, it's, it's really amazing, actually. Yeah, something special, really special. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no stopping you, Kathleen. No stopping <laughs> you. No. So impressive. We'll see if, as long as I don't have a catastrophic wheelchair accident. <laughs> Precious cargo, precious cargo. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. This has been lovely. Thank you. Yeah, so good to have you. So thank you so much. And thank you to our audience too for joining us. Um, and we look forward to having you with us again next time for About Face Theatre presents Five Questions With. And if you enjoyed the, the, this presentation or any of the others, please just like and share. And see you next time. Bye-bye. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and share. Thanks for watching.